You're welcome back to the breakfast. Let's now start off the press. Let's analyze the papers this morning with Mr. Chile Johnson. He's a chief lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, NIJ. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Morning. Thank Good morning. you for joining us. Thank God it's Friday. All right, um, not a lot of enthusiasm, but let's see if the papers make us smile. Daily Independence, PDP enlists former ministers, governors, ex-governors to end crisis. Says it will emerge stronger, better, more united. Atiku Saraki elders call for calm reconciliation. WK storms out of meetings, says the Kondas dividing governors. Four NWC members withdraw letter of resignation. Sultan says we must not be deceived, things not getting better. 35 core members test positive for COVID-19 at Ogun NYC camp. Kano elders ask court to hasten southeast exit from Nigeria. Cessation, not solution to current challenges. That's according to Governor Gandaji. Okorocha says Igbo, not asking for special favors, but level playing field. Group petitions US-EU to stop sales of arms to Nigeria. Messi, Barca, part ways over La Liga financial fair play. Also on the Daily Independence, bandits abduct Zamfara Speaker's father, uncle, five others. Lagos Assembly slashes pensions of former governors, deputies by 50%. Seven states to pilot federal government World Bank, $50 million water scheme. The minister is saying water resources bill controversy instigated by misinformation. Lastly, on the Daily Independent, Onye, um, former Kano ministry, military administrator, is dead. All right, now let's move to the punch newspapers and see what we can find. The big one on your screen there says relief for seconders as PDP BOT tackles Wiki rejects interim exco. PDP chieftains say seconders must complete tenure fault party chairman's handling of crisis board set up uh, conflict resolution committee cautions members uh, members against unguarded utterances army arrests fake masked policemen with 50 bags of indian hemp in undo abducted baptist students parents battle to raise fresh 300,000 levy Angry Oshun residents storm police station as bank robbers kill constabulary. Also, Lagos Assembly slashes ex-governor's jumbo pay by 50%. We can also find here, federal government and Holland float model on uh, Ruga hub in Nasarawa, Wu states. Lagos gets 600,000 Moderna vaccine doses. Cross River gets 105,000. Also on the point this morning, NLC demands electricity tariff reduction agreement implementation by December. Blame states, not federal government, for resident doctor strike, says Haniri. Situation gets getting worse. Uh, lack of food fueling insecurity, says Sultan. And smuggling, uh, fuel smuggling, DPR to track 33,000 filling stations. These are some of the big ones on the uh, punch newspapers this morning. On the nation, PDP crisis, elders fail to halt Uche Secondus removal plots. 28 member panel raised. Party chair reports rebel youth group to BOT. PDP addicted to crisis. That's according to analysts on the nation. Above the headlines, bandits attack 10 councils in my state daily, says Masari. Lagos Assembly cuts ex-governor's pension by 50%. Oyetola promises action on NSAS panel report. 41% of Kwara teachers shun classrooms, says governor. One killed in Oshun Bank raid. Roe over proposed AKT 19 LCDAs. Kokoyab nutrients good to combat COVID 19. 35 core members test positive in Ogun camp. Also on the day on the Nation newspaper, World Bank $50 million for water projects in Delta. Ikiti, five others. CBN recovers 89.2 billion naira for bank customers. And lastly on the nation, or you to repatriate beggars. The Guardian newspapers comes next. Crisis lingers as PDP Board of Trustees fails to reach consensus. Fresh uh, pa uh, peace panel set up to resolve crisis. Members split on Wiki Seconders feud. Also, Wiki's presence generates controversy as party confirms his membership of Board of Trustees. 
Third wave hits harder as 35 Ogun Corps members test positive, 18 in Niger. And fear grips residents as Plateau deaths rise to 40. Fulani gunmen burn 75 houses. Also on The Guardian, DSS ties insecurity to misgovernance and injustice. Bandits attack 10 Katsina local councils daily, Masan tells uh, Chief of Army Staff. Don't destabilize Nigeria, embrace dialogue, federal government tells striking doctors. And robbers raid Oshun banks, kill two. Still on The Guardian, CBN refunds Nigerians 82 billionaire for failed bank transactions. We'll say good morning once again to GD Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Good the, morning. Yeah, story. Good morning, and it's a pleasure to it's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah. And let's start with the PDP Absolutely. issue, which is the major story across all the major newspapers. Well, the PDP is working on the part of service talk. And um, the same and the earlier they stop the hemorrhage, the party is going to the better for the party and the better for Nigerian democracy. But for, because for us to really have democracy, there must be two strong parties so that meaningful opposition can be provided. You agree with me that PDP has not provided any opposition to this present administration like the APC provided to the PDP or ANPP and provided to the PDP in the past. Because it's critical for democracy to survive for a viable opposition to be to be in place. And the crisis affecting the party system should be a call a cause for concern for everybody. In a sense that it's not only PDP that is going to crisis. Even within the APC, there are crises um, in the party and uh, that potents danger for 2023 election. If the party are not properly structured, if the party are in Sari, then definitely we are providing an opportunity for tenure elongation. We are providing an opportunity for an extension or the state of emergency or or what have you uh, because if the two parties cannot hold their hands together and they can't stand above waters and they can't float, how would INEC conduct election? If INEC does not conduct election in twenty twenty three, because if the party don't present candidates, if they don't present candidates, how will INEC conduct election? If INEC don't conduct election, how would there be a legitimate a government in Nigeria. So these are all the issues we should look at concerning this PDP crisis and um, the one brewing APC. Hopefully, we hope these people will be able to put their house in order. And it does, it, 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 it shows something that is really wrong with our country in the sense that if people can't manage their party and you are not giving them the responsibility of managing the country, both parties have demonstrated over time that they can't manage their party. They can't manage their internal affairs. We now give them the external management of Nigeria to manage Nigeria, give them that opportunity. So someone that cannot put his house in order, cannot manage the country. So we have seen this, the, the speed of mismanagement of resources, the insecurity that has characterized our, our system, because both parties cannot even manage their own internal, internal issues. So we now entrust them to manage to manage Nigeria. It's, it's an indication. It's an indication. A strong and viral party system will lead to a strong and viral democratic system. And a strong and viral democratic system will give you good governance. So the rest is history. The foundation of our public governance is the party system. And the foundation of that party system is absolutely in crisis, in patterns. The center cannot hold. Um, APC has an interior arrangement which is antithetical to democratic principle. PDP cannot put his, his house in order. Both the governor and the national chairman that are from the same state, that are from the same, the same political, political, political family, are fighting, are fighting themselves. God will help them to put the house in order because they don't put it in order. They can't put up the credible challenge to the APC that is taking members from PDP left, right, left, right, and. Right. And center. You take that story to the story of um, uh, insecurity because if the parties are, are, are having crisis and most of the actors and the players in the parties are governor, they won't pay attention to public governance. You see, the governor of um, of, of, of 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 Zamfara, of, uh, in Zamfara, the speaker, his father, uncle, and five others were taken away by bandits, and the governor of Kasina State. The old state of the president 
claim that 10 of his local government technically have been taken over by bandits is the state of the president. That's the home state of the president of the Federal Republic. And with the charity begins at all. So if the state of the home, if the home state of the president is bedeviled with crisis, if a governor is coming out to say, tell of my Lord, which 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 people or which territory is he governing? Is he governing? Is he governing over? That means that government is failing in his function, in his function to protect the lives and the property of his citizenry. If it's in in a proper well varied democratic society, um, you we know that 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 calls for resignation. Someone that can't rule, someone that can't provide the necessary um, act of governance, he will, will take the honorable exit of, of resigning of resigning yeah. from office. That takes us to the story of um, what the Sultan said. The Sultan said we should not deceive ourselves, that things are not getting better, that we shouldn't deceive ourselves. If that is coming from the Sultan of Shokoto, the supreme leader of the Islamic Council of Nigeria, if that is coming from him to say things are not, we are back from clerics. Tundebakari spoke the other time. He received stones that stick for speaking. Now we are, we are hearing from the Sultan of Shokoto, we have heard from the uh, unappointed spokesperson of, of bandits in Nigeria, Sheikh Gumi, who have also spoke who have also spoken about, about 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 things not getting better economically for, for the people. In actors says who went for that to call for the resignation of of, of, of of the president that things are not better. And it's it is it's evident the price index of product are high, um inflation is high uh, uh, people are going through stress. For those of us that are working, we know the number of distress calls you receive and text messages you receive in a day from people calling from one relief package or the other requiring you for palliative when you are not in government that you provide the welfare services for the people. So, Mr. Tudor Johnson, um, I, yes. I, I also want us to talk about the story that um, seems to be the buzz here in Lagos where the Lagos Assembly seem to have slashed the salaries of, you know, ex-governors and, you know, jumbo pensions by 50%. We've heard um, uh, talks about this for a long time. Um, what do you expect of the implementation? Those ones are not serious. They are just deceiving themselves. They are just deceiving. Why should Lagos State Governor, um, former governor, collect pension? Pension for what? When Baba Jack on they left, did he, did, did he collect pension? I've been to Baba Jack on to, to Baba Jack on the house many times. He lived before he died, he lived in Lubeju amongst these people. Why should he Lagos? If we are giving a pension to governors, what about other lawmakers? Is that if you see what it's last by 50%, it's absolutely ridiculous. Why? Why why should we give why should we give pension to people that have made fortune out of the states through state patronage? Why? Why should there be pension? Pension for what? You are elected to serve the people. And while you are serving the people, you have been giving your dues. Why? Is he employed? Is he employment? Did they work for 35 years or 50 years? Why should they get pension? In the first instance, I'm totally against the pension scheme for former governors of Lagos State. They should be ashamed of themselves. They should. Any one of them that has collected is starting for Bola Betting would have started it. He should be ashamed of himself. Because if he called himself a Democrat, he should have asked these people to start in the first instance. He shouldn't have even put it in place in the first instance. That's robbing Peter to pay for. They're making, you can't eat your cake at both ends. And that's what they have done. They should be ashamed of themselves. What are they slashing? They should, they should, they should repeal that law. They should repeal. Where, anybody should tell me anywhere in the, law, in the world where you have pensions for governors. It's oh, ridiculous. So, so whether they call it by they are just going to the gallery, they are deceiving themselves. Sorry, so it's not just uh, a government will come in and will require them to pay back. A time will come, there will be an assembly in Lagos that will pass a bill and it will require them to give back to the state all they have collected from the state. Well, um sadly it's not just in Lagos State that uh, we are seeing uh, this but Yeah, it's Lagos um, State initiated in Lagos State, Lagos State um, cross river state, it Lagos State cross river state. Um, initiated
initiated it in 2007. No, Lagos State and Apart of State initiated it in 2007. In other words, Lagos was, was, was the state that started it and it's absolute nonsense. And some of us spoke totally against it before it came into the public domain. All right, Mr. So Johnson. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I want us to, you know, still speak a little bit about insecurity. The punch this morning says, abducted Baptist students, parents battle to raise fresh 300,000 Naira levy. Um, I, I, I want your response, you know, and I know that we've spoken about this over and over, you know, but it, it's going to be no, interesting see, to... It's, 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 you know, it, it's, you have resorted to self uh, Yeah, self and, and that's, what I, that, that's what I want to ask, Mr. Johnson. How have we gotten to a place where, you know, Nigerians can be in captivity for this long and it, it doesn't seem like the Nigerian government is that is concerned, you know? It doesn't seem like there's any extra effort that they wake up every morning trying to save those kids. I've, not, I've never seen a hostage situation in any other part of the world that lasts this long and, it, you know, there's no effort, you know, from the government. It doesn't seem like there is. Well... In the first instance, um, do we even have a government? A government is meant to protect the lives and property of its citizenry. That's the onerous responsibility of any government. And we have been left to self help. The parents have been left alone. And we saw what the governor of Cardinal State said. He said it and we, we have been made to believe that well, government is helpless. If anything should happen to you, you are OYO -O on your own. And it's as if it's, it's normal. It's the norm. It's the norm. Because we are not old. We are not held. Government accountable for its responsibility. And people have lost faith in government. They have resorted to helping themselves out. Because what is the value of an average Nigerian life? Well, people that don't care about the quality of road they construct for you, people die on the road by accident, they, 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 they don't care about the health sector when they are sick, they, they, they fly abroad. They don't care about the educational sector when, they are, when, you, when ASU goes on strike, their own children go to school abroad. So what uh, they eat foreign food, I've told you, all you need to do is to go to the state house banquet and dinner and look at what they serve every night is for their food they close the border that we shouldn't eat imported rice i want to challenge you to go to every state house and see that it's imported rice they are eating when they are eating rice so it's 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 uh, it's a case of animal farm it's a case of animal farm one rule for you the other rule for us we are above the law and there's nothing you can do you can do you can do about it and it, it will come to it will come to an end it will come to an end it will come to an end um, it might not be in our own lifetime but it might be in another lifetime that it will get to the situation that there will be a revolt people don't understand that in in, in france france was ruled by kings and queens in the past he became a king of the past through french revolution and the people said you know what we are no longer going to be ruled by a king or a queen. And in one night during the French Revolution, many members of the royal family were guillotined. Their head were cut off and chopped off because the people revolted against, against, against the oppression of the monarchy because of the insensitivity of, of the monarchy. And we have seen a situation whereby across board from local government to state, state to federal, government being insensitive to the needs and the plight of the people and they are comfortable with it so because the people see that when they run to government government is not willing to help them so everybody has, everybody has decided to solve his own problem by himself take the bull by his own how would they kidnap school children in your country in your state and you are comfortable with it and you are you fit to call yourself a governor are you fit to call it? which which state are you governing over you fit to call yourself a president which country are you presiding over? A country in which 10 of the local government in your home state have been taken over by bandits? My, my goodness, it's, 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 it's sad. It is sad. 
Okay, last, lastly, Mr. Mr. Johnson, sorry for that interruption, but um, finally, I wanted us to talk about this strike with the National Association of Resident Doctors. It's been going on since Monday, and uh, Hanire here is saying that um, the people that should be blamed are state governments, not the federal government. But we remember that, you know, the reason why they say they're going on this strike is because all the uh, grievances that they had put down and had been signed by the government in a memorandum of action had not been implemented. But he's saying that you know, the federal government is not responsible for that and that it's the duty of states. So... Uh, my, 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 my comment will be in twofold. Why, why should we have national association of resident doctors? Why should doctors collect the same salary throughout Nigeria? It should be state-based that will let each state have its own salary structure so that the state can attract them. It's only in Nigeria you have a universal salary structure. The health workers that work in NHS in United Kingdom don't collect the same salary. Those ones that work in London area collect more salary than those that work in other places because of the high cost of living in London. So why should a medical doctor in Lagos be collecting the same salary with a medical doctor in Shokoto, why? Why should we have a national salary structure for doctors, for university professors, for lecturers in university? This thing should be state-based. Until we make it state-based, we'll be having this type of nonsensical national crisis that we have, that doctors will go on strike, which is against the oath, the swore, when they are being inducted as doctors. Their responsibility is to save lives. However, doctors too have their own lives to live because it is when they are alive that they can save life. So when a doctor cannot meet the basic need of himself and his family and we expect him to perform a surgery, then that's two deaths waiting to happen. So that's why I said my, 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 my comment will be twofold. One, we need to separate this. Let the state negotiate. Let the state, let this thing be state-based. Let's say it is, it is because of the long years of military rule that has unitized a lot of things. Rather than federalize a lot of rather than federalized labor, military rule unitized labor in Nigeria. And the, the earlier we go to that, the better for us that we federalize labor so that each state has its own labor, its own labor, right. labor law and a payment structure for his for his staff and his All right. you know and Johnson. His, and his workers. So that's that's the only way to solve this problem. Otherwise, we still be in this cycle that doctors will go and strike and patients will be in the hospital not having doctors to attend to attend to them. You know how many times they've gone on strike? The, the Minister of Labor and Productivity should be ashamed of himself because he too is a former doctor and they can't find solution to right. that problem. Yes. We'll have to Thank you. Uh, we'll have to wrap it up here. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, and for your you know, Thank you. <laughs> okay. Have a great weekend ahead. That's where we, of course, uh, take a break at uh, Off the Press. Uh, we're coming back with uh, Today in History, and yes. we're going to be talking uh, still sports. Mm -hmm. uh, the 3rd of August um, apparently was the day when Nigeria, um, you know, won the Olympic gold in football. Um, and, you know, that's what I'm going to be sharing. Um, it didn't happen on this day, but, well, sometime in August in 1996. Exactly. And I'm going also to 1996 to talk about when um, we had the first African woman uh, win gold for the country. Stay with us.